Hello, um, my name is Philippe Moreau. I'm working in uh, Nantes, the University Hospital. And uh, we are here in Madrid. And uh, we had a very uh, interesting session uh, during the EMA meeting about frontline treatment uh, of young patients uh, with the stem cell transplantation. And I'm joined today by uh, Johan Mladé, uh, working in uh, Barcelona, and uh, Gareth Morgan, who is the head of uh, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, a uh, very famous and large uh, hospital. So, um, Johan, I would like to ask you about uh, the optimal induction regimen prior to uh, stem cell transplantation. In Europe, we are either using VTD or VCD. So what is your favorite uh, regimen, in fact? And I believe that today the uh, most adequate regimen is a bortezomib containing regimen, usually with dexamethasone plus an imid, because the synergistic effect. Mm -hmm. And I believe that PAD, so bortezomib, adriamycin, BCD, bortezomib, cyclophosphamide are suboptimal. And concerning the type of, of uh, EMIT, it could be thalidomide that is currently approved in Europe. Yes. So BTD, bortezomib, thalidomide, dexamethasone, and uh, with bortezomib. But probably this will move to uh, better immunomodulatory agents, probably lenalidomide. Bortezomib probably will move to other Pertasome inhibitors, carfilzomib or exesomib, and lately, probably, we will move to a quadruple induction regimen incorporating monoclonal antibodies, particularly daratumumab. So you are strongly supporting VTD in the future, VRD or KRD, uh, probably, uh, potentially, uh, potentially, and uh, daratumumab in addition, on top of that, if... Uh, available when, from when approved and the trials are showing the potential benefits. Okay. And uh, Gareth, in the US you have a large access to new, new drugs, new agents. So what are you favoring, in fact, uh, in your department? So I think, so for me at least, you need to consider this uh, theoretically. What, what do you want to achieve? And I want to get as many people as I can into a complete response because that equates to uh, good long-term outcomes and mm -hmm. cures. So um, quadruplet regimens and above make the most sense and it depends upon patient comorbidities okay. and their age. Yes. We actually use uh, VDT pace, but if we could add um, daratumumab into that, okay. we would. So I think that's the future for drug regimens. Okay. So a very similar approach, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, in Europe and in the US. And, uh, well, we always have this debate of uh, uh, early versus uh, delayed stem cell transplantation. Should we perform st stem cell transplantation up front systematically or not? Uh, what is your opinion on that, uh, Gareth? Because in the US, many centers are challenging frontline stem cell transplantation. That's not the case in Europe. What do you think? So it's always being the case, I believe, that um, stem cell transplant was was better. So autologous stem cell transplant with 200 mg per meter squared of melphalan. Um, the experiment has been done now. If you drop that, um, you mean it was your trial and uh, other trials, and they show the outcome is suboptimum. So it should be introduce novel agents around autologous stem cell transplantation to improve outcomes. And I think we've moved now to induction, transplant, consolidation, maintenance, and it's the combination of all of those things aiming for complete response that really we have to, to use in the clinic. Okay, so I think that in Europe all of us are favoring frontline stem cell transplantation systematically, but Johan, what is the, the cut-off age limit, in fact, for stem cell transplantation? In the past, 65 yes. was considered as yeah. uh, the, the upper age yeah. limit, so are you doing Sometimes yeah. stem cell transplantation in more, yeah. uh, well, let's say, the elderly patients? Yes. Uh, in fact, I totally agree with Dr. Morgan about the early versus late. Mm -hmm. So don't lose the advantage to administer high dose melphalan mm -hmm. to our patients. And concerning your specific question on age, I mm -hmm. believe that for clinical trials, the age limit should be 65 mm -hmm. because some investigators are too anxious 
-hmm. to include patients in the trials and could include patients with comorbidities mm -hmm. that are much more frequent over the age of 65. In clinical practice, if the patient is 65 to 70, on even a slightly 72, 73, in good performance status, one can go ahead with autologous transplant with melphalan 200, so total, uh, the, the, the total dose. Yeah. Okay. Full dose. So we are moving now up to 70 in routine if the patient is remaining fit, let's say, with yes. a good performance status, Absolutely. as you are yeah. mentioning. So very quickly, are you favoring one uh, stem cell transplantation or tandem systematically if possible? And when are you selecting either a single or a tandem, Gareth? So for our um, younger patients um, who have low-risk disease, I think the evidence is really stacking up now in favour of uh, a tandem or to transplant. Your original study showed a positive effect out from 72 mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. And I think comparative data between the Hovon and the Heidelberg group suggests that double is better than single. Mm -hmm. And so our own data corresponds to that. So I, I think it's really important that we, that we don't dismiss tandem transplant as being what's arguably the best approach for these patients. Do you agree, Juan? I, I agree, and it's, in, it's an approach, but we are using, in general, only one single uh, transplant with Melphalan 200, and there is a trend to go to for two tandem transplants with Melphalan 200 in patients with high-risk cytogenetics. Okay, and uh, well, we discuss uh, also all together the role of consolidation. Uh, are you uh, trusting consolidation following high dose treatment? Are you using it systematically? What are the data to your So I, I can tell you what our approach has been. We, we always used um, two dose reduced chemotherapies basically. Mm -hmm. But I think in the world of uh, immunologically active agents like daratumumab, I'm almost favoring swipping, swapping away from that sort of approach yes. to consolidation daratumumab before you go on, on to a maintenance approach. I don't have good data to support that, but I, I think that's the way the field's going to evolve over the next couple of years. The use of daratumumab to consolidate responses, then long-term maintenance, and then see where you are in terms of follow-up at 10 years. Yeah. We've heard this afternoon that maybe many of us are using a systematic consolidation, two cycles, short term, in order to mm -hmm. further increase the quality of the response. We are doing systematically in France with either VTD or VCD, according to the uh, induction regimen. Are you using no, consolidation? Not systematically. Well? Not, systematically. not systematically, but I think that is a very interesting approach and conceptually is also very interesting and will be incorporated in, in the future in the treatment. In fact, in our PETEMA trial, uh, with 460 patients that are well finished, we include two cycles of DRD consolidation with minimal residual disease measuring at the beginning and at the end. I think that is interesting and is, will be part of the total therapy either in the US and in Europe. Okay, and, and now to conclude, we also discuss uh, the maintenance part of the strategy. Uh, so uh, we've heard that uh, uh, meta-analysis was uh, presented at ASCO this year, at EHA as well, um, on a very large number of patients, 1,200 patients, showing that lenalidomide maintenance versus no treatment or placebo is improving overall survival. Probably LEN will be uh, approved in this setting uh, very soon. Uh, are you using LEN maintenance? Will you use LEN maintenance or are you going to try to use LEN plus something? Yeah, uh, so I, I was very pleased to see the curves on the individual data and see the survival advantage with LEN maintenance after autologous transplant. But I believe that even LEN alone is suboptimal. I believe that we can even improve the results by combining LEN with glucocorticoids and perhaps taking advantage of the synergism between uh, immunomodulatory agents and 
in protestum inhibitor. So len dex or len prednison plus uh, protestum inhibitors, perhaps the oral exosomy. And in our Spanish trial, we have the maintenance part, uh, len dex versus len dex exosomy. That's yes. a very good uh, study, in fact. Uh, and uh, uh, Gareth, uh, are you using maintenance? I think so. Of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so the, 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 the good thing is, so um, the UK uh, MLC 11 study maintenance um, will report at ASH, and I'd be very optimistic that uh, it'll be used in a registration package to approve um, land maintenance in Europe. Um, I still think uh, single-agent lens probably... Um, suboptimal. When we introduced um, LEN plus a proteasome inhibitor, our 10-year survival rates improved almost doubled from 30 to 60 percent. So I clearly believe that the, the baseline is VRD maintenance and we should be thinking about how do we improve on that. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for Thanks this uh, You're discussion. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, uh, well, thank to all of you for uh, your uh, kind attention.